And to be honest, there's like a ton of Wi-Fi tournaments and I've been doing tournaments for like like but now that the match is gonna start, we will let we will leave this conversation for the next. Oh yeah. Isn't so getting into it, uh, I I'm pretty sure this has happened quite a few times already. Uh, this match between Spargo and Chag uh, at the top level, it's um, you know Spargo does a really really good job of just boxing out Politana's options with uh, Cloud's disjoints, and we're seeing it start off a little bit here with Chag just struggling to get in. Yeah, it's rough. And I mean, both both these players probably play a lot with each other because they just live close, right? I, yeah. I would assume they grind a lot together. Uh, and yeah, I mean... Oh, they no, struggle. really. Uh, well, they probably... I do not know if they actually play offline quite a bit, but... Well, Spark is, like, really Ooh. far away from where we live. Dragon. Really? Because Spark is from uh, Tijuana, right? Yeah, Tijuana is, like, is, like opposite like, coast from Mexico City, isn't it? Oh, okay. Really, like, Close to the US, literally like one hour away to the US, and Chag and me live in Mexico City, that is like really in the center of Mexico, so it's like far away. I actually oh. never did a offline friendly with a Spargo. I actually, the only time I saw a Spargo in like real life was Smash Factor and Fat and Fat. I usually never, usually never play him, I usually never see him. You almost can't Getting... consider Spargo like SoCal, right? Because I've seen Spargo yeah, at like he, a lot of Yeah, he competes at SoCal stuff. events all the time too, because it's just close enough that he can he can hop up and win a tournament and go back home. And to be honest, well, if you live close to the US, there's no reason to travel to Mexico City when you have one of the best cash communities like right next to you, so. You yeah, know. for sure. Ooh, but getting caught with that, uh, that landing, uh, sorry, landing squat up tilt right there is going to kill Sparrow. A little bit earlier than he usually dies. Uh, Spargo, probably one of, if not the best Cloud player, uh, but not just on the ledge. He he edge guards completely different than any other Cloud, but right there going to get gimped at only 30%, going down really, really early, and suddenly Chag finds himself in the lead. You know, or not. That's, that's going to be something that you always have. You know, in your pocket against Cloud, you can have like a huge deficit going on. But at the end of the day, you can breathe on this character off stage, and there goes the Cloud stock. And ultimately, it's a little different because you have directional air dodge. But Chag has been gimping Cloud for years now, even all the way since Smash Four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's he definitely very that. used to it. Uh, with Limit Break online, Sparta has the opportunity to retake momentum here, though. See what he does with it. He manages to get the blade beam moving in, try and edge guard, but no, Chag makes it back to stage safely. He's trying to get back to the stage. He doesn't want to be in the ledge against Spargo. Like you guys said, he's one of the best clouds. Well, I would say he's the best cloud right now. He's not really good at ledge trapping. And I feel like Cloud is, its you can be so safe when you ledge trap, and even if they like normal get up or something, you just keep covering roller and ledge jump. And then after that, like even if they do normal get up or ledge drop double jump, you have them in the corner, right? And Cloud is so good at pinning people against in the corner because of forward tilt, because of backer. He has so much range that you have to respect that kills you. Getting caught right there, making it back safely. Uh, for Spargo right now, he earth touches that, but means that he has to grab the ledge. <laughs> He's one explosive flame away from losing the stock in game one of this. That back air was very close to doing it, but a great DI from Chag. Avoiding the blade beam with the neutral get up, that also could have been it. He is very, very close to taking this both ways. Oh man, yeah, this is last stock, last hit situation. Spargo still has a ledge trap here. Barely gets yeah, that was dash uh, attack. Spargo would go for that. I was uh, I was doing a first spin against him. Whoa, Every time he tr like he tries to do something, he goes for the immediately dash attack. Uh, dash attack know, is man. literally just another smash attack for Cloud. He, he can. It feels like you're gonna roll right like that, and then you just get punished. Smart guy from being at the ledge. Yeah, yeah. And Spargo is just so good. I mean, he's one of those younger players. And one thing I noticed with a lot of the up and coming younger players, they they are very aggressive with their pressure options. And even if they're, you know, not all out committing versus you, they're trying to set up some kind of frame trap. They're trying to set up some kind of way to just get the kill aggressively. We, we pointed it out earlier that Spargo is one of the best at edge guarding. Um, and it's definitely uh, I guess you would call it a symptom of what you just mentioned right there. Like, he likes killing early. He doesn't like waiting as long as he needs to to get a, a safe kill or a kill confirm. He wants to kill you at like 30 off stage because you made a mistake against him. Oh, yeah, for sure.
And even uh, even Leo, when he was a little younger, he definitely uh, did that too. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, Jin is something like that. Gets... Leo was something like that, of course. So uh, then yeah. I was. Uh, to be honest, I feel like this party is really good. But like you said, there are some like there are some players that just like play like that. But there's some situations where like that game plan or like that play style doesn't really help you in every single trip. Once again, Sparto losing these stocks a little bit earlier than he would probably want to. Chad getting uh, really, really good reads on Sparto, catching that uh, approach to ledge with down smash. Right now, just trying to get as much extra credit as possible, but no, Spargo says go away right into the blast zone with that down air on ledge, and we're back to almost perfectly even right here. Uh, yeah, yeah what a good down air. Yeah, it's so huge. I feel like they made it bigger in this it, game. The it initial lingers. Like, it lingers forever. Yeah, it's so amazing. Yeah, to be honest, so... dude, everyone that says Cloud is not that broken in this game is like, well, he might not be my thing, but Cloud is here. Cloud is good. Yeah. I don't know yeah, about offline, yeah. but he's like, he's really like, good. Getting caught mind. on that uh, air dodge, he doesn't have a jump. I don't think Sparrow I mean, can make it make to ledge yeah. here. Yeah, yep, that's gonna be it. And I love how. Uh, you know, Chag even uses the down smash like earlier on that first stock. I love how he uses that because you can use the wind boss. There's so many ways Palu can really like catch Cloud going to the ledge. And that's the thing about Cloud, he's really, really good. But I just feel like, you know, sometimes people will be like, oh, it, it can be hard to be consistent with the character when you don't have like a very consistent recovery, right? Like there's always that wing con versus you where it's like you get that one double jump read and you're done. Going for a grab right there, and yes, Sparto again, probably the best at using clap, uh, Cloud's grab, even though it's, in my opinion, one of the worst in the game. Sparto makes very, very good use of it uh, to reset neutral in some situations and just get, because again, Cloud doesn't have any confirms off of his grab. He's not getting a ton of percent off of one grab. But what he is getting is an opportunity to get back into neutral where he thrives, using that grab as an option to just reset and start over again, getting what he wants. Dangerous position off stage right here for Spargo though. Chag just needs one more good confirm and that's it. We're going to game three. Back there, not yeah. quite gonna do it. He's the earth dodge now. He tries to get the score, but not in that your Mal always missing. I feel like Chag, well, we saw him using counter the second stock, but I feel like he needs to use it even more. There's a lot of times that Spargo just uses his double up beat. Well, Chag just doesn't do anything, but that one's so able to take it. Yeah, that That's... down tilt is so broken, dude. That move is really, really strong. The lingering uh, hitbox, so good for two framing. Like, you, you just caught normal get up there. And the thing is, if he didn't normal get up and he stood there or like stood on the ledge and hung there on the ledge, he would have got hit by the down tilt anyway. You're covering yeah. so much options. And then like, that thing doesn't just hit you and like, oh, it's, it's a whatever hit. If you get hit by the late lingering hit, you're dead. If you get hit by like the lower hit by the ledge, if you hung there on the ledge, it combos into like fair or back air. The move is so, so good. Yeah, uh, it's just the uh, like you mentioned the lingering hitboxes. I think they're gonna run it back to PS2 again. Yeah, probably uh, because they didn't no. do anything. But yeah, lingering I, hitboxes against Cloud are really good. Really, really good. When, more when he's trying to recover. Three, two, one, go! Any, any character it's... that has just two framing abilities, right? That that's gonna be one thing that Cloud does not like. <laughs> Despite, again, we were mentioning how good Sparrow Ooh. is at getting those kills on ledge, but we're neglecting to mention how easy it is to kill Cloud on ledge. He he just uh, struggles to get back to ledge against certain characters, such as Palutena, with those lingering two-frame hitboxes, like you were mentioning. And right here, he's already struggling to get started again versus uh, Chag's neutral. But we're staying mostly even right here. Chag's starting to run away with a bit of a lead, though. Thing uh, I really like about Chag's Palutena, he's he's probably the most creative Palutena when it comes to combos as well. You see Chag always trying to set up the reverse snare to keep them into the stage and kind of like keep them in the blender, right? Uh, it's it's a very unique way of comboing, and I think that's what really like one of Chag's biggest strengths as a Palutena player. It definitely sets him apart, and I do like how you mentioned it's the blender because once you get put inside of it, you're taking you know 40, 50, 60 percent off of one interaction. Uh, and again, Chag is probably, uh, there There are other Palutena's out there, but none of them play quite like Chag does in getting these conversions for a whole lot of percent. And that was a really nice fade by Espargo. Yep. I feel like that's one thing uh, a lot of people don't realize too much is, you know, 
being being able to shield at the very last moment to bait your opponent in because if you shield too early your opponent like visually sees that bubble right so they they're kind of scared to um, commit or they'll go for a grab but the best way to like bait some of these characters with really good dash attacks like fox like Palutena, is you wait for the very last moment then you pop the shield up have them commit and if you have a very strong out of shield option like cloud with up B, or even just up smash out of shield to get the ko's it's going to be such a good way to come um, get these stocks yeah, already doing a great job oh right now. Goodness, catching the counter, that's, counter. Yeah, Chak's been using counter probably more than any Politan I've seen at least in a long time uh, to get these uh, hits on Spargo, but Spargo with the up air train right there, and suddenly we're back to even. Spargo definitely going to be looking to use this limit break before it goes out, but no, just whiffing off stage, unable to capitalize off of it. And I love the earlier, the double jump, neutral air dodge coming out from Spargo. That's something you're going to see a lot of characters with great air mobility abuse. Uh, just because you are you want that to sustain that whole air mobility, you don't want to break that up with the directional air dodge. So really good stuff. You're going to see that from a lot of like Cloud players or Wolf players. Um, it's, it's just such a good option. And Spargo abusing that, staying on stage where his character is so dreadful. Again, with the shield. Great job, up, yeah. Spargo is so good at baiting these shields out of Chag and then punishing him. Right there, uh, we saw Chag just kind of sitting on the respawn platform for a second there going, hang on, I shouldn't have died there, what happened? Yeah, even just waiting out the limit is uh, really good. You get this back throw finally. Back throw is going to take it, but right now, you know, with the output that both of these characters are capable of, both of these players are capable of, it's definitely possible that we go back to even very soon. And we're already seeing it with the Nair up air train right here. Wow. Spargo all the way up to 62%. Right My goodness. Very nice now use of the platform extension. <laughs> and really? there's the down air. There it is. Yeah. Argo is really good at catching those recoveries. More against Whoa. actors than recover with teleport. Yeah, I think uh, what Spargo did there, he just reversed the teleport straight into the yeah, blast zone Chag, there. Chag <laughs> really just had to delay it, like, like what, like one second? He, like, he, he wouldn't be safe, but I guess it was too desperate to get back to the station since he doesn't want to... Well, again, we were saying that Spargo is uh, one of the best less trapping.